Eternity and Gen's Ace, arguably two of the most popular lithium polymer battery brands out there. In this video, I'm going to be testing the difference between these two brands and seeing which one performs better. This first test will be with the Nanotech 2200 mAh 3-cell 45C discharge battery and the Gen's Ace 2200 mAh 3-cell 55C discharge battery. I'm going to be putting each one of these batteries individually on my very large quadcopter and seeing which one has the longest flight time and which one puffs up the least. So first we're going to try out the Gen's Ace. Um, it's mounted right there below the controller board. Here we have the little battery indicator here and it will start to uh, beep and flash red when the battery hits a certain voltage. So right when it starts doing that, I will land immediately. So after flying, both batteries felt to be about the same temperatures. Um, they were both pretty warm, which surprised me. I thought they'd be hotter because um, this thing pulls enough current to even puff up 5,000 milliamp hour three cells that are about 20 C. So these batteries both held up really well and I'm uh, really impressed with the results for both of them. So I ran these batteries both down to 4% of the capacity. You really shouldn't go below 15% because it's bad for the life of the battery, but I ran them down to four just for testing reasons. Now I'm going to cycle them about five times each. I taped uh, 16 ounces or one pound of metal onto the bottom of the quad just to speed up the discharge on the battery. Um, so hopefully that'll wear down the batteries. And then after I cycle them a couple times, I'm going to do the same test that I did again and see how they hold up. So I really underestimated these high uh, discharge batteries. I put three pounds of weight on the quadcopter as well as four 25 watt halogen floodlights in parallel and it still wouldn't even wear out these batteries. Um, they showed no sign of wear or damage at all. I attached a little camera to the watt meter on my quadcopter to get some in-flight data and it was pulling about 650 watts at about 60 amps. So here's what I'm using to pull a ton of current from these batteries. Basically what it is is 10 50 watt halogen floodlights and three 25 watt halogen floodlights all hooked in parallel. I've got a watt meter right here and a fan over there to cool off the lights because they get really hot as well as all the wires. Um, when you plug in these batteries directly to a huge load, uh, the connectors uh, heat up a ton. There's a big spark and I actually had one of the connectors weld together. So I built this switch right here. Basically it's just uh, two 30 out six shells. Of course they're empty um, and they're split apart by a piece of plastic and when you pull out the plastic they connect and the circuit is, um, is connected and the lights turn on. So that keeps the connectors from welding together and this whole system pulls a lot of current and it's good for testing them. So as you can see here we're pulling about 65 amps at over 600 watts. Here's a graph of the voltage sag on the first light bulb test with the 2200 milliamp hour batteries. The blue is Gen Zace, the red is Turnigy, and the green is a 20, uh, 25C battery I had that I tested as well. As you can see, the Gens and the Nanotech were pretty much the same the whole way. Um, the Nanotech was just a fraction of a volt uh, below the Gens, but basically the same. And then the 25C battery was way below both of those. And here's a picture of the 25C battery after the test. So after cycling the batteries about 10 more times each, I did another test and graphed the results. Um, as you can see, here are the lines for all the tests, um, as well as the 25C battery and the uh, first test. 
Um, but the light blue line is the Gen Zace and the uh, purple line is the Nanotech. Um, this test was also done after I added uh, three more 50 watt bulbs. So that's why the voltage is a little bit lower than the first tests um, as well as the batteries were wearing out a little bit. But um, the pretty much the same results were, are seen here. The Gens is just above the Nanotech by a fraction of a volt. So I'm really impressed with both these brands and how they performed. After the tests, the Gen Zace did come out on top, but that was expected because the Nanotechs were 10 Cs less. Um, however, the fact that these results were so close, especially in the beginning, kind of leads me to believe that the Gen Zace batteries are overrated. Um, I'm guessing they're 50 C, not 55 C. Um, and I'm kind of thinking this because it doesn't make any sense that the Nanotechs would be underrated, so I'm guessing the Gens are overrated. When it comes to prices, the Gen Zace are about $27.59 from HobbyParts.com and the Nanotechs are $18.29 from Hobby King and $18.88 from Hobby King's USA Warehouse. If you were to just order one of the batteries, shipping from HobbyParts.com would be $15.02. Shipping from the Hobby King USA Warehouse would be $5.87. Um, if you want a higher C battery that performs better, uh, Nanotech also has a 2.25 amp hour 3 cell battery that's actually 65C and that's only $29, um, $2 more than the Gens. So that would be your best bet if you want a really good performance battery and I'm guessing that would uh, just smash both of these batteries in performance. Now we're going to test out the 4000 mAh 4S25C batteries. Um, these both have the exact same specifications, so we're just going to see if these batteries perform as uh, advertised by the specifications on the label. The max amp draw of the battery is calculated by timesing the C rating with the capacity. So 25 C times 4 amp hours is equal to 100 amps. So these batteries should be able to uh, have 100 amps pulled from them constantly. The setup I'm using to do that consists of three 50 watt halogen lights as well as two steel cables in parallel that just create a lot of resistance and pull a lot of current from the batteries. Just a side note, this is really dangerous. If you were to do this with copper wire, your batteries would just explode. So don't try this at home. So I cycled these batteries about 20 times each and then did some testing. This graph here is showing the voltage of the batteries. And as you can see, the Nanotech's voltage did sag just a fraction of a volt lower than the Gens. So the Gens did do a little bit better voltage-wise. Um, this graph is looking at the watts. As you can see, the, the Nanotech's did provide more watts than the Gens. So that should give your plane more power. Um, but as a result of that, it did die a couple seconds uh, shorter than the Gens. So it didn't last as long, but it did provide more power. So to sum that up, if you want more performance from your plane and more power, um, go with the Nanotech. And if you want a longer flight time, go with the Gens Ace. When we're looking at prices, the Gens Ace is $40.96 at HobbyParts.com. And the Nanotech is $33.07 um, from Hobby King. And um, it's $34.32 from Hobby King's US warehouse. If you were just to purchase this one battery alone from each store, it would be $55.98 from HobbyParts.com with shipping included. And from Hobby King, it would be $42.32 with shipping included. So the Turnigy definitely wins in price. So that sums up this battery testing video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and subscribe.